So the question is, what's the road ahead? Uh, Post 10, what are we looking forward to? Well, here at Esri, we're going to support new platforms. We're going to have the iPhone, the iPad, Windows Phone 7, and of course, Android. The beautiful thing is, have you seen earlier this morning, the iPhone is now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand off to David, and David's going to tell you more about what we've been doing with the iPhone. David? Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, this is the part of the program where I'd like to solicit a little bit of crowd participation. How many folks out there have an iPhone? I know there's a lot of you. I'm sure someone beside you has one, too. Go ahead, raise your hand. That's better, yeah. Okay, great. ArcGIS for iPhone is going to be released with ArcGIS 10. It's going to be composed of both an application as well as an SDK. The application is going to be made available through Apple's App Store. The SDK is for you, the developer, so that you can build custom applications that meet your business as well as your customers' needs. I'd like to show you the application right now. So here we see the application. And the application allows us to find maps that have been authored and hosted in ArcGIS.com. It allows us to do this through uh, various means. We can uh, navigate to it via our favorites, or we can navigate to it via groups that are published through ArcGIS.com. And then finally, we can also search. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the map that Jeremy authored earlier. I'm not going to put you through the pain of me typing foggy bottom, so I'll just search for tree. And I see here that I have a foggy bottom tree inventory. I can go ahead and view some of the metadata associated with this. I can share it with some friends. I can make it part of my favorites. And of course, I can go ahead and open this map, consume it, and interact with it. But the application is more than just that. Suppose I'm a property assessor for a local government, and I've received an email from my back office that tells me I'm going to be able to access instantly property data out in the field, and it's going to help me do my job. So this email prompts me to download the app from the App Store if I don't already have it. Since I do, I'm going to cl click on the map, uh, click on the link that takes us to the map. Now, the application recognizes the URI of this link and opens automatically and displays some excellent cartographic data of both property boundaries as well as building footprints. This map was authored with a predefined query that allows me to get property info based on a parcel ID. So I'm going to go and search. I can get at some of the details through this view, or I can go to the map and I can do this search again. Once I get my result, I can go to the map. I can take a look at this property. I can access its data that will help me assess this. This map was also authored with the ability to allow me to turn on the visibility of another layer, say, sales and foreclosures, that will help me further assess this property. So let's go ahead and identify that, and we see we can view the historical data of this property that's been for sale. But the application is just a part of ArcGIS for iPhone. There's also an SDK that you can use to build custom applications. Here's an application that allows citizens of a city or township to uh, report problems within their community. It's a service request application, and it can be used as a companion to the service request web application we saw Jeremy uh, demonstrate earlier. Immediately, this application wants to use my current location to, uh, to assign uh, the, the problem. Because I'm not in Naperville, Illinois, I'm going to dismiss this, but I can specify other, uh, or the location other ways. I can search for an address, or I can go ahead and tap on the map. And when I do that, we have some reverse geocoding that happens that displays the address in the callout window. I'm then prompted as a user to enter in more details, and I can go ahead and do this. I can add a photo, either by taking a picture with the device or specifying a picture I have on my camera roll. And I can see that I'm not the only one who's noticed this pothole. We have another unfortunate fellow who's uh, discovered it as well. Of course, I'll need to tell my local government what kind of problem this is. It is a pothole problem. 
And because I want them to let me know when this has been resolved, I'm going to give them some contact information. Kdo, Jdo, all right. When I submit this, this application is taking advantage of the new feature service in ArcGIS 10. And it's not only adding a record to the database with all of the textual information I've provided, but it's also adding any of the attachments as well. Now, the Public Works Department can take the service request and create an official work order out of it, send a field out into the, or send a, a crew out into the field such that it can get fixed. I'd like to show you some code that went, uh, that went into building this application. Here I'm in Xcode, which is the IDE for uh, iPhone development, and um, probably the most common class you're going to be accessing is the AGS Map View class. Of course, since most of your applications will probably contain a map, you're going to be instantiating an instance variable of this. Now, the map really isn't that useful unless we can add some data to it. And a good time to add the data to, the, to this application is when the first view has already been loaded. Luckily, the iPhone SDK has some delegate methods that notify us when this happens. So in our view did load method, what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate an instance of an AGS tiled map service layer. We're going to pass in a URL that, mentioned, that, that represents the data that we want to display. And then it's a matter of adding that layer to the map. Because I explicitly allocated this object, I'm going to have to release it as well. So don't forget about that. What are some of the other delegate methods that we can override? Well, there's a couple delegate methods that we used extensively in this application that notify us when the user has clicked on the screen. Did click at point. And at that point, we're going to show a callout window at that location. Another delegate method lets us know when the user has clicked the more details button in the callout window. Once this is done, we instantiate an instance of our details view. Now that's the view that's going to uh, allow the user to enter in more detail, photos, et cetera. We then add it to our navigation controller to display it. And then of course, because we explicitly allocated it, we need to release it. There's a lot more that we can do with the ArcGIS for iPhone. So I'd like to invite you to attend a few of the sessions that we have going on throughout the week. And uh, Jim, I'd like to hand it back over to you. Thanks, Dave. So that's some exciting stuff. So that really concludes um, the end of the section. We, we did it after the break with uh, mobile and server. And uh, this is fantastic work. Uh, so we'll look forward to using it soon.